Hello there, Tom Hickey here at DCU. I wanted to talk to you in this video about judicial review of executive power under the Irish Constitution with reference to two cases. One, a recent case, Elijah Burke's case, Elijah Burke and the Minister for Education from 2022. And the other case, an old famous case, really, at this stage it's old, uh, TD and the Minister for Education, that uh, socioeconomic rights case from 2001. Um, I'm going to assume knowledge of the TD case in this video. Uh, I, I will talk about certain aspects of the Elijah Burke case, the facts. You know, Elijah Burke was um, a, a young student who would have been do doing the Leaving Cert were it not for the pandemic. Uh, the government effectively had to cancel the Leaving Cert because of the pandemic, I guess, in 2020, uh, 2021 perhaps. And instead, the government exercising its executive authority under Article 28 of the Constitution, established what's called a calculated grade scheme, right? So in other words, that meant that the various students, all the students, 60,000 of them, 70,000 of them, could get calculated grades and could therefore proceed, let's say, to third level and get on with their lives. And the scheme was pretty sophisticated. And it had various workarounds, if your auntie was a French teacher or whatever, but didn't have workarounds for Elijah Burke or people in Elijah Burke's situation, right? So he had been homeschooled all his life by his mother. Um, and the government kind of couldn't come up with a way of getting round um, uh, the difficult arising and refused him a calculated grade and so it meant that Elijah Burke had to wait really until circumstances allowed him to sit the leaving cert proper so it meant he was going to miss out on a year as it were and he challenged the constitutionality of um, the government's decision and, and won right he won in the high court won in the court of appeal and won in the supreme court on slightly different grounds each time right so for our purposes well, there was a there was there was an interesting question as to whether or not Elijah Burke had a right to homeschooling. Let's just say, put it like that. Um, and the court wasn't satisfied; they didn't want to put it like that. Chief Justice Donald O'Donnell didn't want to declare, if you like, certainly not an unenumerated right to homeschool, right? But under Article Forty Two of the Constitution, in summary, the court was satisfied that the circumstances engaged a constitutional freedom to homeschool children, if you like. So for our purposes, let's just say that constitutional rights were engaged, the court was satisfied in the Elijah Burke case. What I'm interested in here is what lessons we can learn from, or what insights we get from O'Donnell's judgment with respect to judicial review of executive power, right? Because the government's lawyers in the case argued that in all such cases, that the standard of review was clear disregard. That is to say, when judges or courts were engaged in review of the constitutionality of actions or conduct, if you like, carried out by government in the exercise of its executive authority, before the courts could invalidate, if you like, or strike down or whatever, declare unconstitutional um, such action, the court would have to be satisfied not just that the government had acted maybe in breach of the constitution but had to be satisfied that it had acted in clear disregard right it's just a phrase meaning like a high threshold to meet and of course the government wants that to be the test because it means it's not likely to get findings against it uh, but the court disagreed with the proposition the court said it's not always the standard it's sometimes the standard uh, and it's not the standard in this case because it involves constitutional rights, right? So what, you know, and, and, and therefore that um, Elijah Burke was able to win his case and Elijah Burke did uh, win his case. Now, how did the Chief Justice O'Donnell and the court get to that conclusion? Well, it seems to me that pivotal to their getting there was this distinction that they drew, right, between two different categories of cases concerning um, judicial review of executive power. On the one hand, cases involving or breach of constitutional rights or arguable breach of constitutional rights. And on the other hand, cases, let's say, that didn't involve breaches of constitutional rights. So in the latter category, cases where uh, concerning provisions of the constitution regulating the separation of powers or the conduct of the executive branch in particular. And essentially the kind of maybe principle that comes out of Elijah Burke for a judicial review of executive power is that in rights cases, 
the clear disregard standard does not apply, right? It's a lower standard or a lower threshold that has to be met. Uh, whereas in cases concerning separation of powers or, you know, the conduct or of the executive branch, that the clear disregard test is likely to apply or maybe does apply. Uh, and in getting there, into that reasoning, uh, O'Donnell, the Chief Justice, kind of explores or analyzes five kind of major historic cases in Irish constitutional law concerning judicial review of executive power. They are Boland and the Taoiseach, Crotty, the famous Crotty case on the Single European Act, um, McKenna and the Taoiseach from the mid-1990s, Kavanagh and the Government of Ireland, and TD, of course, and the Minister for Education. And essentially, it seems to me, uh, that O'Donnell places all five of those cases in the non-rights category, you know, whereas he places the Elijah Burke case in the rights category. And he says that in the kind of, let's say, call them structures category, sep regulation and separation of powers category, you know, that he analyzes the five cases. Now, he doesn't give much attention, it has to be said, to TD, but uh, analyzes Crotty in particular, for example, Boland, and says, look, in all of these cases, um, the government has been granted um, exclusive authority to exercise executive power. Um, they aren't constrained in any of those cases by express restrictions in the text of the Constitution. What seems to be called for in the context of those cases is a broad political judgment right, on the part of the constitutional actor rather than a kind of a forensic um, determination that might be made by a court and for all those reasons and for some other reasons right those are the kinds of cases where the main forum of accountability for government under the constitutional system is the doll right under article 28 and th that reinforces the notion that the appropriate standard is the clear disregard standard. And O'Donnell then says, and you should look at paragraphs 60 and 61 of the judgment in particular, but in paragraph 61 <clears throat> he says a different analysis applies in cases involving breaches of rights. He says, you know, there is no justification for applying different standards of review in rights cases depending on whether you know, or depending on which organ of state um, is said to have breached rights. 